Sir Margaret Akean uh, uh, Minister, last Friday, a 69 year old man known as Iggy, originally from Poland, uh, was found dead in a laneway off Little Catherine Street in Limerick City. Pauline Casey, an anti representative and homeless activist in Limerick, Sarah Beasley, knew Iggy from their work in helping the homeless. In fact, Pauline and Sarah spoke to Iggy on the night that he's died. And this was especially poignant for Pauline as she had lost her sister Louise on the streets in 2016. I know that the Gardaí in Limerick City are involved and I understand there's efforts underway currently to try and repatriate Iggy's remains to his native Poland. And maybe the minister might know this particular case and might be able to update us uh, with regards to those efforts. And my party, AIN2, are happy to seek and we help raise funds to help with some of the costs associated uh, with the re repatriation of Iggy's remains and, and God rest his soul. Uh, Iggy is just one of the people who have died in homelessness in the last year. And I've raised the issue of homeless deaths in this house in October. I raised it again in November, and I raised it again in December. And Minister, you mentioned about a previous deputy leaving the chamber um, before the debate had finished. And actually, in two of those debates, Minister, before we had got to speak, before I had brought this information to the floor of the chamber, you had gone uh, in those particular situations. So you wouldn't have heard my contribution uh, with regards to these particular uh, uh, cases. I was the, the one that brought the information to the floor of the doll that just under 60 people had died in homelessness in Dublin City uh, last year. A figure that was higher than the two previous years, which is a shocking situation. Um, now, it, I've, it, it, I, I raised the issue and a RTE journalist had a camera in front of you on a site where houses were being built and that journalist asked you a question in relation to the figures that I had brought to the doll that day. And you had responded to say that you would investigate, you would hold an investigation into the deaths that have happened in Dublin um, in homelessness in the last year. So I, I'd like to find out first of all where stands uh, that investigation? Uh, is it near completion of the results and will you share the details of what's known so far with the Chamber? Ger Margaret. Thank you, Deputy Tobin, and, and uh, thank you for your question. I think the, the Deputy will understand why I won't refer to a specific case, but every death uh, in homeless services is an absolute tragedy, and the case that he specifically referenced, obviously my condolences and that of the, the government go to, to that gentleman, his family, and indeed his friends. I did say that we would investigate it. Deaths in homeless services is a complex issue, as you know as well, Deputy, and I have written to you on, on this before, that many, unfortunately, die in homeless services, may die in emergency accommodation for other reasons with complex health needs and, and other elements. So there has been a worrying increase in that in 2020. I accepted that. I acknowledge that with the Deputy. Uh, I did commission, and I've answered this in the Dáil as well, by way of written question as well, Dr Joanna I Ivers uh, in Trinity College is actually carrying out that detailed report right now for us. That work is nearing completion. I would expect that that would be concluded in the first quarter. I've said in the Dáil, in answer to parliamentary questions, when that work is concluded, I will certainly publish it. We will engage with the Joint Oireachtas Committee on, uh, uh, on, uh, on housing as well. So that, that's where it stands right now at the moment. Uh, Ara, I also raised at that time the fact that people who are homeless uh, but who are not from Dublin um, who present themselves to homeless um, facilities uh, were being turned away. They were being told to go back to their own counties despite the fact that another arm of the state was telling them not to travel because of the COVID restrictions. Now months after I had raised that you appeared on the RT Investigates programme and you appeared shocked. Uh, at the results of, uh, they had found, even though that this had been brought to the floor uh, of the chamber by myself uh, previous to that. Um, and the truth of the matter is, Minister, that this has happened since. There have been five occasions reported to me of people who are homeless in Dublin uh, going to services in Dublin and being told, no, you're not from this county, so you, you can't have this. Now, you did say in a previous contribution that it's up to particular TDs to make this information individually known to yourself, but Minister, you're the guy that's responsible for this. And in truth of the matter is, there's an organisation called Inner City Helping the Homeless. They are a, 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 an organisation that are on the front line night after night. They have made requests to appear before the committee in Leinster House and they have, you know, I believe the opposition TDs on that committee have requested that they appear before the committee, but I believe the Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and the Green TDs have actually refused access to inner city helping the homeless. 
um, to uh, appear before that committee with this type of information. I also uh, asked you, Minister, you know, how many people from the rest of the, uh, of the 26 counties and the other 25 counties have died in homelessness um, uh, in the last year? In the response to the parliamentary question, Minister, you said you didn't know. You said that those figures didn't exist. Now, honestly, Minister, for an issue of this importance, pleading ignorance isn't a, a reasonable response from a minister. And the truth of the matter is, how do you actually tackle a situation if you as a minister are unaware of the scale of a situation? So the question I, I have, uh, would ask for you there would be, what is the situation with regards to homeless deaths in Limerick and, and the other 25 counties outside of Dublin? Why isn't that information not collected? And the other question I've asked you previously is, when are we going to have the standardization of services throughout uh, homelessness within the state? Because there's a va very varied uh, uh, difference with regards to the provision of services, services for homeless people. And that's one of the reasons why many people sleep in tents, sleep on the streets night after night. Can you answer those two questions, please? Minister? I'll do, I'll do my level best. I'm not sure whether, just to try to answer um, Deputy Tobin's uh, questions, no one is, is operating in, with any degree of ignorance here at, at all, I can assure you of that. I've answered you in relation to homeless deaths already. In relation to local connection, by the way, and it wasn't, I, you did raise that issue in the Dáil, it wasn't just on foot of, of what you had raised. We changed that process and I instructed all local authorities, not just in Dublin, from the 9th of December. 7th of December I announced it, followed up by a letter on the 9th. Local connection is not a barrier to anyone accessing emergency accommodation. I chair a homeless task force myself with our homeless partners and agencies, people like DePaul, like, Dublin, like Simon Communities, uh, Focus Ireland and others, indeed the DRHE. I visited uh, homeless facilities in Limerick and Waterford very recently where real progress is being made. So let's just put, put it in, you let me answer the question, you might. If you don't mind, if you don't mind, you've asked me, well, okay, well, if you just want to speak, then I won't answer them. But like, what I'm saying to you is, is that local connection is no, is no barrier. The report in relation to homeless deaths, I've answered that already. In relation to uh, our homeless services, and let's recognise the fact that homelessness year on year is down over nearly 19%, which is welcome. Child and family homelessness is down nearly 40% year on year, and we'll publish our quarterly report tomorrow, which will actually see a further reduction, and that's to be welcomed and to commend those who are working in the sector in assisting us in you, permanent solutions for people and driving Deputy people Toby. out of homelessness. I actually think that people around the country, people listening to this debate, will think it's absolutely scandalous and flabbergasting that the Minister for Housing in this state does not know the number of people who die in homelessness throughout 25 of the counties of this country that there is no process to collect that information, that there is no centralising of that information, that that information isn't at the tip of his fingers. If you can't analyse or measure a critical problem of l lives being lost, how in God's name are you supposed to be able to, 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 to fix it? And just with regards to the RTE Investigates programme, um, they produced statistics which showed that a large number of people who were homeless um, became drug, drug addicts after they became homeless. So, you know, I think it's sometimes we hear a debate around here that, you know, people are responsible for their own misfortunes. They are certainly not. People have been failed by the system in this country. The only safety nets, I believe, that are being provided by men, too many people are the charities and the individuals are, who are out night after night. And in, in all of this debate, we need to pay attention and give commendation to the work that they are doing uh, around the country. The, the last question, Will you uh, meet with Inner City Helping the Homeless and get some of the details uh, that they have with regards to the reality on the streets? Minister, maybe you'd correspond with Deputy Tobin on that question because we're out.